Hello my friends, in today's video I am going to talk to you about my color and lighting tips and tricks. I made a video on this exact topic around six years ago and it did so well. I think a lot of people are interested to hear an artist's specific uh, thought process when it comes to choosing colors and figuring out lighting. This is a more general video than if I had just been covering lighting or just covering colors, but the good news is I'm going to be covering these topics extensively in my upcoming book on digital painting. This video is still going to have a lot of great information, but if you want a little bit more of a deep dive, my book will be out at some point. Before we get started, I wanted to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Clip Studio Paint. I'm beyond thrilled to be working with Clip Studio Paint again because, truth be told, I was in a little bit of a rut with digital painting before using this program. This is the program that I am exclusively using for digital painting, sponsored video or not. I've been really loving it. There are so many great features to this program, and you can tell it is made to be completely utilized by both beginners and professionals alike. One of the best features of the app is that it allows you to draw on different devices and across devices. So if I'm tired of working on my computer with a physical tablet, I can pull out my iPad and work from a coffee shop or from another part of my home. It's versatile and the integration is seamless so that you can use the exact same file across your devices. There is a free trial available if you'd want to try out Clip Studio Paint. I'll have everything linked down in the description right at the top if you were interested in checking it out. Definitely recommend giving Clip Studio Paint a shot and seeing if it works for you. Let's get started on my tips and tricks. I privated 103 videos a couple months ago because I didn't resonate with the content, the advice, or my personality anymore. There are a couple of videos on my channel that you can watch that talk a little bit about what shifted and what changed, but primarily I've just grown a lot since I was a teenager and have stepped out of the situation that I used to be in. I'm in a much different place now and so those videos are a little bit bittersweet to watch because I was working as hard as I could at the moment and so focused on art but art was definitely my escape and I didn't know quite as much about what I was talking about then as I do now. Of course, I have so much to grow with my art. I'm not saying that I'm at the end goal, of course, but after six years, I rewatched that video and I realized I didn't know very much about colors at all. I mentioned in the video that I was only comfortable painting from a grayscale and then using adjustment layers to add color to the final painting. That's changed drastically now. I'm comfortable with colors and I'm happy to share the most important tips that I know now, things that I wish I could tell Sarah in 2016. But as always, a caveat is that rules are made to be broken. If you are familiar with these concepts with colors, anatomy, lighting, and composition, you can make conscious decisions to break rules in order to push your own personal style. These tips are just good general information and a great starting point for beginners. Firstly, use a reference if you're not familiar with the 3D form of your subjects. Placing highlights and shadows is the first step to having a vibrant and dimensional painting and somewhere that I see beginners uh, feeling is they are just painting an awkward pose from their imagination. The way that your eyes interpret a reference versus what actually is in front of you are two different things. I'm right now balancing working from references versus from imagination and I have the opposite problem at the moment. I've been relying on references too much and not relying on my imagination and therefore I feel like my paintings are becoming a lot more stiff and I'm focusing on the wrong details. There's not quite as much life in my paintings anymore so I'm stepping back and I'm not really using references for my digital paintings for a while. So there might be some things that are anatomically incorrect. I am trying to be okay with not creating perfect art and perfect proportions. That's something that I always get stuck in my head about. So for me, working from imagination is the way to go at the moment. My tip for choosing a color palette is as follows. 
choose two or three colors that you want to stand out in your piece. Don't consider skin tones in this color palette. Just think of those colors. For myself, I wanted a saturated warm red, a dark brown, and a frostbite blue lilac kind of color. And a good rule of thumb is to pick one or two brighter saturated colors to push the contrast in your piece. As you grow your abilities, you'll be able to make any color combinations work. If you're struggling, try something that is classic or tried and true or find a palette online. It's time to place those colors on your sketch. When placing your skin tones, remember that there are cooler and warmer sections of the skin. Fleshier sections will be warmer, while bonier sections will be cooler. Use this as a guide for placing your skin tones. So you don't have to have nude colors for the skin. This applies to both lighter and darker skin tones. You can utilize the palette you want for your piece placing the warmer tones in areas such as the cheeks, the nose, lips and ears, and then the cooler tones on the brow bone, the chin, the collar bones. You can see how I used the blue all across the skin and it still looks human, albeit a little bit frozen. My next tip, this one is I think something I've learned in the past two years or a year is that I like to add various hues to the face. You can see that I added some green and yellow alongside the blues and violets in the skin already. I just mentioned having a primary color palette so this might be confusing. You're like why are you adding green and yellow in the piece as well. I like to take these creative liberties to add dimension and a unique pop. Especially in the skin, using a natural color I think is so fun to play with. The way that I will incorporate these tones is by using a very light pressure and opacity in painting these gently into the skin. So if you color pick where your eye sees the green or the yellow, if you look on the color board, it's not actually green or yellow, it just appears to the eye. You're using a very light wash over whatever skin tones you have in your piece already. In this painting, I like how the skin looks translucent and almost opalescent because of the variety of tones I included. Again, I'm using the same rules of the fleshy and bony areas on the face to place my colors, and this doesn't mean that if I want blue in the cheeks, I wouldn't add it. I would just need to add a blue that could blend in with this rule. In this case, I would add a violet leaning blue rather than a cyan since it's closer to the pinky flush already in the cheeks. Now that I have kind of the base colors added, it's time to add highlights and shadows. When placing these, consider the reflectiveness of the surface of your painting. So something that absorbs a lot of light will have less contrast and softer shadows and highlights, kind of velvety, while something with higher reflectivity will have harsher shadows and highlights, like the glowy skin of the cheeks. When painting skin, I even consider what parts of the face will be shinier based on makeup and oil buildup throughout the day and what areas would be a little matter. I like to personally have dewy blush on my cheeks and on my nose, so I like to paint my subject with shinier noses and cheeks. This is a personal preference, but important to establish for your own style. It's something that I've gotten a lot of heat over the years about how pink I make my noses and my cheeks. I like it, and that's all that matters. Now that you are placing the highlights, consider the color temperature of the light hitting the face. When you think of light, I think it's very common to think of a highlight as just being the color that you have on the canvas and just add white to it. Very rarely is light a pure white in nature. This is also not a photorealistic scene, it's all from my imagination, so why not have fun with the colors? I like to vary the highlights and bright whites in my pieces with pinks, yellows, and blues, and in this piece it helps to achieve iridescence that I want to see in the skin. If you're trying to paint something a little bit more realistic, you're using a reference, consider the type of light hitting the face. Is it warm golden light from the sun? Is it fluorescent lighting from like a school ceiling? You know, the angle matters, the harshness of that light matters in the way that you're going to be creating these shadows and the highlights. If the light is harsh, you're going to have harsh lines where the shadows are. If you have a diffused, soft studio light, the shadows will be so much softer and blurred out on the face. 
The truth of the matter is, for me at least, when digitally painting, your best friend is going to be adjustment layers. Soft light, hard light, and overlay alongside with curves will help you tweak the colors until they are exactly where you want them. I usually have a clear idea of the end look for a piece, but as I kept painting, my direction started to change. I took out most of the winter berries and wanted this skin to look more violet than blue. So this is extreme for me. Don't take this as like my usual painting formula, but I used probably 20 to 25 adjustment layers, taking breaks from my computer, playing around with the highlights, shadows, adding more saturation, adding brightness and contrast until I came up with a final image that I was satisfied with. The painting process isn't always going to be necessarily taxing or difficult, but you might need patience and a little time to step back from your painting to come back and reanalyze. It's important for you to trust your gut. You can experiment and make mistakes and it will only help you grow in your process. I am extremely proud of this painting I pushed through because sometimes I get discouraged. I am not vibing with where the direction is taking me and so I want to scrap it and start over. But to those moments I say step back, come back with energy, a fresh perspective, and your painting is going to work out in the end if you give it time and love. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you, a good resource for the future. Let me know if you have any thoughts or questions. I'd love to help out any more if I can. These are all my tips and I hope that you gained something from this. Again, be sure to click the link in my description to check out Clip Studio Paint. You can grab your free trial if you'd like to try it out. I highly recommend. My social media is also linked in the description. I hope you're having a good end to your November and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.